Nathaniel Hawthorne. Nathaniel Hawthorne was born in 1804 in Salem, Massachusetts. His father died at a relatively young age. Therefore, Hawthorne grew up with his grief-stricken mother and lived in relative isolation as a child. His great-great-grandfather was a crucial judge in the Salem witch trials. The family felt that they had been cursed by their connection to the sad events. It also happens that his family had been very wealthy and influential during Puritan times, and was still well off, so he was the beneficiary of these Puritan wrongs. Therefore, Hawthorne focuses on a sense of shame over his connection to the Puritans. As a young man, he had a hard time making money as a writer, so he worked in a number of government-related jobs. As an adult, he didn't really like living in Salem. In his words, I detest this town so much that I hate to go out into the streets or to have people see me. But he was forced to go out in public in order to make money. At the same time as Romanticism, another literary movement was occurring. It was kind of an offshoot of Romanticism, known as Transcendentalism. Hawthorne himself was not a Transcendentalist, but he was interconnected with a number of key Transcendentalist writers. He became friends with two key Transcendentalist writers, Ralph Waldo Emerson and Henry David Thoreau. He even married a woman who was involved in the Transcendentalist movement, but he himself never gets class classified as a Transcendentalist because he focused more on storytelling than the Transcendentalists did. In addition, he had a much darker view of human nature than the Transcendentalists. Hawthorne ultimately became famous for writing The Scarlet Letter, which was set in Puritan times and dealt with the consequences of characters who violated the community's imposed morality. Hawthorne was also one of the first American writers to explore the hidden motivations of his characters. Hawthorne's beliefs. In his words, the author has provided himself with a moral, the truth, namely, that the wrongdoing of one generation lives into the successive ones. Therefore, within his stories, we see a, an emphasis on looking at how the past influences the present. He held a dark view of human nature, and ultimately believed that people are inherently self-seeking. This implies that the world is a relatively bad place. In American literature, the supernatural tends to come in where there is a problem in bridging the present legitimately with the past. This can be seen with ghosts or other spiritual forces in Hawthorne's writings. In the two stories that we're reading this week, we can see the issue of the past and the present not fitting well together and therefore supernatural forces are, are brought up. The next portion of this lesson will focus on the stories Young Gunner Brown and The Birthmark. Please don't continue with this lesson until you've actually read these two stories. Hawthorne's family history surely played into his motives for writing Young Goodman Brown. He has an obvious interest in showing the Puritans to be hypocritical, but there seems to be something more that he's interested in as well. After all, the Puritans are no longer an active group during Hawthorne's life, and Hawthorne himself did not see himself as a Puritan. So therefore, there must be some other kind of issue that he's intrigued in, in looking at in writing this story. Instead of just trying to get across a critique of the Puritans, this story can also be read as getting across a message about the concept of the devil. After all, Goodman purposely puts himself in the situation to be tempted. Then, when his wife is apparently taken to the devil-worshipping ceremony in the woods, Goodman runs through the forest, demonstrating a kind of evil that is described as more intense than even in the devil himself. Thus, the story might be critiquing the concept of evil as an external thing. In other words, critiquing the idea of the devil itself. But rather implying that evil is an internal human thing. Beauty is a significant issue in the story of the birthmark. During the Romantic period, there's a significant interest in the concept of beauty and thus in defining it. It was general, generally believed that true beauty required a flaw of some sort, which makes it unique but also human. An example of this 
in contemporary times would be in the model Cindy Crawford. Her mole is a flaw, but it's considered part of what makes her beautiful. Clearly in this story, Georgiana is a symbol of beauty. Her one small flaw is seen by most as, uh, by, by most as a way of confirming her beauty. What important issues or force of this time is Hawthorne critiquing in a story? Aylmer believes solely in the power of science. Note the great emphasis on Aylmer's faith in man's ultimate control over nature. This was seen by many as the crucial str struggle of the day. Could man master the natural world? Particularly in a world less focused on God figures, almost invisible in Hawthorne's literature, being able to master nature meant being almost omnipotent. This reference to power shows Aylmer's megalomania. Notice, however, that Hawthorne is critiquing this attitude that science might lead one to. And it fits with the mad scientist motif common in the last few hundred years, but particularly used in the 1800s. A common misunderstanding in the story with the birthmark has to do with why Georgiana dies. It's not actually the potion that kills her. It's the fact that he's removed her one flaw. This now makes her a perfect being, and therefore not capable of living in the mortal world. The hand was the thing that tied her to the earth. Hawthorne may also be critiquing the common attitude of never being satisfied with what we have. That's clearly seen in Aylmer, who is the most beautiful woman in the world, but comes to find her as hideous.